Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this episode, special edition, where I'm doing a quick review of the 2020 model year Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, PHEV. It's one of the first PHEVs that I'm actually testing. Um, as you folks know, I'm not a huge proponent of not full electric vehicles. However, I do see a need for plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, of course, in many marketplaces. And the need is pretty strong with this Mitsubishi. Don't know if you know it, but it's the number one selling plug-in hybrid electric vehicle globally. Last year, Mitsubishi sold over 200,000 units in over 50 countries globally. That since the Mitsubishi plug-in hybrid electric vehicle or PHEV Outlander was launched in 2013. So quite a feat for a company that's kind of maintained a pretty low profile here, uh, especially in North America where there's not a ton of advertising and but you do see these things on the road. Let me give, give you some of the specs of this vehicle. Now this uh, plug-in hybrid is the only plug-in hybrid SUV to offer 100% electric four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive capabilities. Now there are other comparable vehicles in the marketplace today in an SUV, specifically in all battery or all electric form, like the Audi e-tron, the Mercedes EQC, which technically isn't shipping yet, but you can order it. Uh, of course, the Tesla Model X, and that's kind of about it from a full-size SUV or a five-passenger SUV uh, perspective. So what does that mean? Well, that means that those vehicles that I just described are about double the cost of this one. So you gotta pay twice as more if you want anything all electric in some decent carrying capacity and load size. So this does fit a nice niche where you can put five passengers comfortably in the Outlander, yet still retain some all electric functionality in all wheel drive capabilities. And in fact, that's all automated. It's the only plug-in uh, hybrid SUV as, as well uh, with DC fast charging capabilities providing 80% charge in under 30 minutes. Most plug-in hybrids just have level 1, level 2 charging, level 2 below 50 kilowatts. And one of the, the standouts with this is the warranty, which I'll talk about near the end of the show. As you can see, it's a nice looking vehicle. It fits right in. It's a standard SUV type format from a vehicle footprint. Um, I can tell you that I got, have had this vehicle for about a week down. We actually had some really major snowstorms over the last few days here in Southern Ontario, uh, kind of our last blast, I think, for winter, where we got six to eight inches of snow uh, in, in a relatively short time. This thing had no problem plowing through that snow with the all-wheel drive capabilities. One thing I like about it is that you can turn on all-wheel drive, you can force it, so that it'll always be all-wheel drive. Other than that, it's a very nice, comfortable vehicle. I don't think it stands out in the crowd. It certainly blends in and it fits in and, and the form and function is certainly there. As you can see by the interior shots, it's again comfortably fit. This is the top of the line version. The, I have to look at my notes here, the GTS uh, AWC, which is all wheel drive uh, solution, which has all the leather, um, has pretty well all the appointments. A couple things that I did pick out that it doesn't have is rear uh, heated seats for the uh, second row occupants, which is kind of a shame because we've had some really cold weather and taken some people out, some of the family out in this, and it's a shame that it didn't have second row seated heats, heated seats, and I would think for the price point that it would. Just the front seats are heated, just a small thing, but all the other standard appointments that you would expect from a uh, mid, mid, mid size SUV. Now, one of the unique features of this is a, um, it's got two 80 horsepower electric motors linked to a 12 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, which also is linked to a two liter gasoline engine. One of the things that um, Mitsu claims, and this is three distinct driving modes. One is the EV drive mode. So you can push the EV drive button or EV only, and it will get, you, it will drive you and keep you in the battery only mode as long as there's juice in that battery. Once the battery gets down to zero or it gets low enough, the engine will kick in and then the, the rest of the drive modes will kick in. There's also a series hybrid mode, which uses the engine generated electricity to power the electric motors. Again, when this car is running off of the battery, it's running in all wheel drive all the time. Uh, that's one feature of this vehicle. So it does, it does distribute the power to both motors at the same time in fully electric mode or when it's drawing power from the battery. Then there's parallel hybrid mode, which uses the engine to power the wheels uh, of the Outlander with assistance from the electric motor when extra power is needed. So 
When the battery gets low enough, the engine, of course, will send the draw, send power to the front wheels. In this case, unless you have it in all-wheel drive lock, it will send it to the front wheels, and it will be it's, then it's a front-wheel drive SUV for that moment in time that the engine is driving it. So when the battery is low enough. The excess energy is used to charge the battery while driving in this mode. So I've been watching the screen all week and it keeps doing this dance of switching around all automatically between these three drive modes. So, you know, I plugged it in overnight, got about 23, 24 kilometers of range because of these minus eight temperatures that we've had. Today is a nicer day. And then driving, of course, and one thing I do, um, I did notice about the Mitsubishi is that the range is very accurate as far as the battery goes. It is almost bang on. If it tells you you got 23, you've got 23. Um, and that's pretty phenomenal. Now, again, it is a smaller battery. For a lot of applications, that may be enough to get you to work or get you roaming around in the winter. I would expect in the summertime and the nicer temperatures, the range to double to around 40 kilometers, between 40 and 50 kilometers should be no problem. And that, of course, will open up the use case for this vehicle. And as far as that battery pack, it does support, as I mentioned, both level one, level two, and level three. Well, it's really not level three, but for the sake of public consumption, most people call it level three. It's really level two up to 400 kilowatts or anything over 50 or 50 and up. But anyway, it can do um, the level one in about eight hours through a standard 120 circuit, standard 110 outlet, uh, 240 volt up to three and a half hours for a full charge and 80% in 25 minutes using the chattable DC fast charger. Now fuel economy, because there is a gas tank in this and you do put about, uh, I filled this up for about 40 bucks worth of fuel. So something along the lines of 35 liters or so, 35 to 40 liters. And um, I was able to see on the highway about uh, eight to nine liters per 100 because it was colder weather and I was driving, you know, 120, 115 kilometer speeds. Um, one thing that this car does is it does use the battery enough, even when the battery is depleted, to kind of keep you in about a 30% efficiency range. What I mean by that is that it will use the battery 30% of the time. So use the zero emission portion of this vehicle to propel you about 30% of the time. And again, it intermixes that as you travel back and forth. All your standard safety features are here with the exception of a lane keeping. It provides a lane warning if the car will drift out of the lane if you have that activated, but it doesn't uh, try to keep the car within lane, nor does it have active steering. So it does have active cruise control, which will keep the distance using its radar and camera system, but it does not have uh, lane uh, keeping and assist so that you can actually let your hand off the wheel and it will steer for you. It does not have that feature, which is kind of surprising for a vehicle uh, that's a 2020 model year. Not the quietest machine. I, I pegged over 82 decibels on the highway of, of noise, 81 to 82, uh, possibly because of the big winter tires that are on here. Uh, certainly a factor, of course, with noise. And, and I did notice some wind noise in this a little bit more than I'm used to, especially in my, in my very quiet Nissan Leaf. But overall driving experience was pleasant. And one thing Mitsubishi gives you is a peace of mind with this vehicle. They're probably the only manufacturer that provides a 10 year, 160,000 kilometer, 100,000 mile powertrain limited warranty. Back, uh, combine that with the same warranty for the lithium ion battery and a new vehicle warranty, which is bumper to bumper of five years, 100,000 kilometers or about 66,000 miles or so, and a five year unlimited kilometer roadside assistance to back it all up so that if you are concerned about running out of gas or electricity or both, you've got, uh, you can pick up the phone and phone roadside assistance. Now these vehicles come in four trim levels and they range from just under $44,000 Canadian to uh, just uh, under 52,000 Canadians for the different trim levels. Um, they all qualify for the federal incentive rebates that we have here in Canada. You can get up to $2,500 uh, off the price of this through the federal incentive. Okay, my quick impressions when I'm driving the Mitsubishi. As I said, it's a very competent vehicle, handles the road quite well for its type of class and size and weight that of course it does. And with the all-wheel drive, uh, four-wheel drive, two electric drive motors operating a lot of the time, it, especially in the snowy weather that we've had, it's been really, really handling the roads well. Of course, there's some good winter tires on this vehicle. So right now I'm driving in electric only mode. I've pressed the button which is EV mode. And as you can hear, it's relatively quiet. I mean, I'm going through some slush now. Today it's warming up, so all the snow that we've had is melting. 
but for all intents and purposes, it's a fairly quiet ride. Um, again, you're going to get the suspension a little bit more heavier uh, because it's an SUV, so it's going to handle the bumps quite well, but you'll feel some of the deeper ones, of course. Um, again, very, as I mentioned, the cabin is pretty nice and it gives occupants uh, a fairly comfortable environment to set in for, especially for long periods of time. There are multiple um, levels of regenerative braking using paddle type of shifter mechanisms on the steering wheels. Um, I found that using B5, which is the, the most strongest regenerative braking, um, is the best really for this because it doesn't, it's not a very strong braking. It's not very aggressive, but it's certainly something you can feel versus just coasting. And it does put some juice back into the battery. So I'm stopped at a light. I'm going to give it the accelerator now and I'm in EV only mode and let's see if this is a neck snapping experience here. Not really. <laughs> So it has enough get up and go to get you going. It's certainly not used to the EV torque that uh, especially all electric vehicles have. Um, this is a, a sub, 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 subdued, that's what I'm trying to say, acceleration. Again, it's plenty to get you going from a light. If you need to merge onto the highway, it will do that. Um, but you need a little bit more room than you would normally need for an all electric vehicle. So if I take it off EV mode now, and I'll just leave it in auto mode, what this does is it shifts between EV and the different um, powertrains that I mentioned earlier as far as the, um, the what this vehicle comes with. And it does a really good job because it's all automatic. Now you can hear the engine when it does kick on. Uh, if you're listening, if you're kind of have your music going, then it's go everything's going to be just an automated experience. And I think that's what Mitsubishi is aiming for in this vehicle, is just to give owners the sense that, look, we're gonna take care of all the different driving modes. If you want to, you know, have, if you have the ability to home charge and you wanna run an EV only mode and you can do that, uh, we give you that opportunity with the right button to push to force it in EV mode. Otherwise, if you just leave it in automatic, which I would guess that the vast majority of people are going to do um, with this type of vehicle, I'm hoping that they will charge it up and then use EV mode, of course. But uh, even leaving in automatic mode, as I mentioned, will save you about 30% of your, your gas emissions uh, and your use of petrol fuels because of the, the battery size in this. It, the system just uh, automatically regulates the power back from the engine to the batteries to the two motors to the single motor if it's an engine going just to the front motor giving it front wheel drive capabilities and so forth. Now as I mentioned from the buttons there's also a button to put in the charge mode so if I press this button then the uh, engine comes on and it all it does is it continues to charge up the battery. So the power for the wheels comes from the battery and the engine is acting as a generator to continue to send charge to the battery to try to maintain the level that you're at. Now the battery save button, what that does is it limits the use of the battery when you're over certain speeds and that the engine will kick in and act as a um, generator to continue to provide power to the battery to, to maintain the, the state of charge that the battery has at that time where you've pushed the button. So final impressions from a driving, Again, it's a very competent vehicle, um, so definitely an easy vehicle to drive. Um, all the instrumentation is placed logically where it's pretty simple to find everything and uh, get your way around. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick review of the 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in a hybrid electric vehicle. My, my overall take on this is it's a fine vehicle to do what it does as an all-purpose SUV and a good family vehicle. It's got 1,500 pound towing capacity. Um, from an EV perspective, as I mentioned at the top, I am a bit of a purist at heart and I would love to, love, love to see this in a totally all-electric platform. Um, when in electric mode, it drives pretty quiet and very smooth and you know it's not the most powerful thing because of the weight of this vehicle but it does it does provide a very nice experience in all electric when the engine kicks in you can hear it it adds that additional noise you can watch the energy flow and know that you're you're sucking gas so you know for the use case that it offers of up to let's say 40 to 50 kilometers in in decent weather um, with, with a pretty good payload and, and personnel capacity on this vehicle. It does the job and it does it very admirably. So there's no surprise that they're the number one selling plug-in hybrid electric vehicle in the globe because of the functionality that this vehicle gives you.
So I would, I would love to see this platform from an all-electric standpoint, or at least a bigger battery, maybe double the battery size so you can get some more significant range. And I'm hoping that Mitsubishi will take that because it is a good, decent platform and it does the job. So definitely a thumbs up vehicle. Would I get one for my use case? No, I wouldn't. It doesn't really, I mean, I don't need a big SUV, first of all, and then second, of uh, I'm, I'm into more uh, of a bigger battery size if I were to get something than a plug-in hybrid, but I do see the use case in this. So anybody interested in the Mitsubishi plug-in uh, Outlander plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. This is the 2020 model year. Certainly there's some good incentives that are going in a lot of different regions as well, and no wonder that it's selling quite well. And I would certainly recommend you get one.